Hello, and welcome to another video. Uh, you may be hearing my PlayStation uh, kind of fanning in the background. Uh, I actually just started up this game, or, like, it's not a new game, I've been playing through it, but uh, just started up the PlayStation recently. This game takes, uh, I guess, a lot of energy to run, so my PlayStation is always kind of like cooling itself off in that regard. So you might hear that in the background, which I did post another video where I was playing Last of Us in the background, and I think you could, it actually was kind of annoying with how loud the fan was, um, but hopefully it won't be too big of a problem. I mean, I'm not talking to anyone like I was in the last video, so that'll definitely be a plus, at least in my opinion. Um, now, the topic of this video, you can probably judge by the title of this video. I don't know what it's going to be yet because, well, I haven't uploaded it yet, but I think I have a general idea of what it's going to be about. But I, I'm basically going to be explaining my political beliefs, I guess you could say. Um, like when I got into politics in 2016, you know, the 2016 election between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, uh, I was a conservative Republican. Trump 2020, sorry, Trump 2016, build the wall, Hillary for prison, type of guy. Um, and those were kind of my beliefs for a while, for the following few years. I didn't really care that much about politics, but if someone was going to ask me, hey, Austin, what are your political beliefs? I'd say, I'm a Republican, I'm a Trump supporter. Um, then in 2019... It was around earlier, mid-2019. I started looking or kind of listening to libertarian views and ideas. Which, for those of you that don't, that don't know, libertarians are very pro-small governments. Basically just, it's a party devoted to despising the government um, and a lot of the things it does. And I kind of adopted some libertarian beliefs. I still consider my self a conservative up until this year um sorry for saying um a lot but i like you know i was thinking you know we should legalize marijuana nationwide um lower taxes obviously although i guess you could say that is still a bit of a conservative position depending on who you ask uh, making prostitution prostitution legal mainly any drugs legal and I was just trying to, you know, kind of be a conservative libertarian, which, you know, doesn't really make a lot of sense in hindsight, at least to me. But that was, those were kind of my political beliefs. Now, going from there, I just kind of, like, continued to be a conservative libertarian, but I kind of was, like, looking... You know, obviously I would try to listen to, you know, some people on the left uh, and their ideas. I watch mainly Kyle Kalinske for my perspective on the left point of view. I heard a lot of people on the left like him. Uh, he's pretty popular. And, uh, yeah, I saw some of his videos. I thought he made a lot of good points, and I was starting to think that a lot of people on the left were making some pretty good points. These people aren't dumb. You know, they're not, you know, stupid libtard, get wrecked, Ben Shapiro destroys, as I had previously, um, kind of thought. They were more articulate, more intelligent than I had previously concluded. And just to clarify, I'm not now like some left-wing guy. I don't consider myself left or right, but those were kind of my... like I was kind of becoming more and more prone to the idea that, hey, maybe not everybody that disagrees with me is an idiot and a moron. Um, so, you know, I was trying to learn about other beliefs, and then, just a second, I don't know why this keeps happening. Um, here, running to start, there we go. Now, so, I was trying to, like, understand what's the best political beliefs, because I kind of, you know, had been trying to understand everything. And one, I guess you could say, left-wing political idea 
at least left wing in America, that I was kind of thinking about, you know, this would probably be a good idea as free health care. You know, as like a conservative libertarian, I believe that police should be, you know, free or taxpayer funded, firefighters, courts, military, you know, the basic stuff. So I thought it was only logical, uh, logically coherent that, you know, health care is important as well so that someone doesn't, you know, go broke because, you know, they got a broken risk um, at the skate park or whatever. You know, because healthcare is pretty expensive in the United States. Um, so that's one idea that I did come close to, you know, taking up. I eventually didn't, but I guess I just wanted to kind of explain my history and politics um, before I get to what I actually believe. So, earlier this year, a few months ago, I met a person who kind of explained to me this belief. This belief that was very much not the mainstream, very much not, um, I guess, the expected. Very much not something that either a typical Republican or Democrat would view as a good belief or think that, you know, they make a lot of sense. And that is anarcho-capitalism. Now, I, as a person who likes playing video games, I had played the Bioshock games, and I'm not sure if you guys know what those are, before meeting this person, so I was very skeptical of, like, anarcho-capitalism, and, you know, the idea of just privatizing everything, you know, privatize the police, privatize uh, the military, privatize the courts, you know, I was very skeptical of it and how it would work, but the more I heard about it, the more I found out about it, the more I talked about it, it seemed to be more and more the better idea to go towards. And eventually I became an anarcho-capitalist, I'd say about two months ago, three months ago, something along those lines. Um, and I guess now I should kind of like go into explaining the anarcho-capitalist beliefs. Um, so, at least with my specific, I guess, Rothbardian view of anarcho-capitalism. There are kind of different views, which it's kind of funny when you think about that. Libertarianism is a subset political group. I don't know if you can really call it a subset. It's a political group. And then, you know, anarcho-capitalism is a fringe kind of subversion of libertarianism. And you kind of have a couple different versions of anarcho-capitalism from what I know about anarcho-capitalism. Um, and I hold to, I guess, the Murray Rothbard, Rothbardian view of anarcho-capitalism. Uh, so, essentially it's based on self-ownership. The fact that one owns themselves, and that any violation of that would be wrong, would be evil, would be immoral. And the alternatives to self-ownership are either nobody owns you, including yourself, or, I believe, everyone owns you, or everyone owns everyone, which, obviously, I don't believe these, very obviously. Um, and I do apologize for talking so quietly, I guess, slowly. I'm not sure if it'll sound quiet, because sometimes when I make a video, I think I'm like talking in a loud voice, and then when I hear the recording, it's actually pretty quiet, but then sometimes I think I'm talking like I am now, and when I actually hear it, it the volume's turned up very loudly. So, essentially, you own yourself. Okay, that's the first idea. Any violation of that, as I said, would be immoral. So with a basic thing that a lot of people I know on the left would agree with, and some even on the right, liberty, more libertarian says, occasional conservative, and that's legalizing marijuana. You know, that we shouldn't throw someone in jail or fine them or take any legal action against someone for putting a substance into their body. And that's kind of where it starts. And then you get um, into the more unpopular kind of beliefs of it, 
which is taxation as theft. Because it is the unpermitted extraction of wealth that one does not own, as I like to put it. Um, essentially, if you own yourself, then your property is an extension of yourself because you own it as well. So, any um, taking, or as I said, extraction of that property from someone else that does not have your permission to use or take that property would be wrong. So, I like to kind of explain it with an analogy. If a thief stole billions or trillions of dollars a year um, and tried to justify it by saying that, you know, he was going to put it towards, you know, social programs that probably the majority of which are pretty dumb, pretty useless, pretty inefficient towards, you know, whatever you want to, I don't want to use the greater good because I don't believe in these, you know, societal collectivistic terms, but essentially like, you know, um, programs to help Chinese prostitutes in China become sober, spending over a million dollars on um, a robot that folds laundry. I don't believe that these are, you know, obviously these are dumb plans. I don't know why I'm going so far into this. Essentially, if a thief did this, not a lot of people would follow them and think, wow, man, this, this thief, they're genius. They're amazing. They're helping so many people. They'd think, this guy's a thief. He's stealing trillions of dollars. And on top of that, he's not even doing anything with it. It's like, if you're going to steal our money, at least, you know, buy a private jet. You know, do whatever. Uh, rob some more places. But they don't. But if you replace, and I do apologize for taking so long to go into this, but essentially, if you replace the words thief with government and steal with taxation, it's fine now. It's the greatest thing ever. It's government. It's society. It's democracy. It's the way we live our lives. It's what is good, what is right, what is just. And I don't really understand that. Um, and I think a lot of people are kind of, you know, just because, you know, we are raised in the current state, you know, we are just kind of taught that and I don't want to get into, like, you know, the whole, like, because I know, like, communists, socialists will do this too. You're taught to love capitalism. All you have to do is be free of your chains and be a communist and have equality for all stuff like that. But essentially, I mean, I don't think anybody would deny that government or democracy essentially is almost always betrayed as a good thing in media. You know, everybody's talking about how, oh, I support the government and it's the great things it does. Um... So essentially, I don't think that the government is a good thing, and I do think that it should be abolished, or gotten rid of. So, I guess that was the basic tax analogy. Analogy. I do believe taxation is theft, and the only way to prove, I guess, that it wouldn't be theft is to either prove that you do not own yourself, or B, that um, it is somehow... Uh, it can somehow coexist with the idea of owning yourself, which uh, I'd say is a pretty monumental task, and I don't think it really can be done, but, you know, if you or someone wants to try, I, I won't stop you. So, with that being said, that is why I think taxation is theft, because it is the unpermitted extraction of wealth that one does not own from a private individual who did not transgress against this government, this thief, this uh, crook. Now, that's basically the basic thing with taxation. Democracy. Voting. Uh, the election. This happened recently. We, If you're like me, you're on the internet a bit, you've heard, seen a lot of ads, either for Donald Trump, either for Joe Biden, or just general ads, just saying, you know, go out and vote, support democracy, help, um, you know, freedom reign, whatever it is. And I am adamantly against democracy, which I know is once again another unpopular opinion. And I know the general idea with democracy is it's the best, you know, it's not a very at least this is with some people. Some people worship democracy, which is mainly people on the left. But it's not the, it's not a great system, but it's the best thing we've uh, come up with in human history so far. So, you know, 
if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's There could be a better alternative, but right now we don't really know of it, so we're just kind of winging it with democracy. And obviously you have different forms of democracy. Um, America has a very distinct form of democracy, although my conservative friends like to say, well, it's a republic. I guess they don't know that democracy is voting, which we have. We're basically a democratic republic. Um, anyways, I am against democracy because it is 51% of the population forcing their subjective will, ideas, and belief systems onto the other 49% of the population. I think it's a very basic, you know, a lot of people have put it like that before, but given my anarcho-capitalist beliefs, I think that better explains why I view it that way as opposed to just, well, you know, we need democracy because what else will we do without democracy? Uh, funny enough, I've actually never been on this ledge of the hospital building before. I didn't even know you could. I've played this game a couple times before. Sorry that one of the reasons I am talking so slow is because my mind's kind of on two areas, and if you know anything about me, I'm not the best multitasker in the world. So, like I said, I do apologize for that, for, you know, not doing a great job at, you know, maybe explaining what I believe because of my preoccupation with playing this game in the background, because it is a really, really good game. I would recommend anyone get it. Obviously, um, I would recommend recommend that you be on the older side of things. Um, let's see, can I make a grenade? Yep. Alright, so democracy, as I said, it is because I believe that everyone owns themselves. I don't believe that half of the population should be forced to follow the laws because, you know, obviously when you choose a leader, you're hoping that they will enact laws that fit your personal opinions or beliefs, you know the right people on the right typically want, you know, more lenient gun laws, uh, more restrictions on abortion, uh, stuff like that, while people on the left typically want, uh, higher taxes for the rich, um, obviously abortion to, you know, persist in the current state it is, or maybe they want it to be more frequent. Anyways, I guess that basically explains my quarrels with democracy. Anything that violates the right of another individual. Now, self-ownership, what does that mean? It essentially, and I, I I know that I've explained it, it means that anything that violates someone's rights to self-ownership is bad, obviously. So, I can't kill someone, I can't steal from someone, I can't rape someone, I can't attack someone. You know, I can't just walk into a room and punch someone because I'm bored. That would be an unpermitted act of violence against a peaceful individual, and I am against that. So, in an anarcho-capitalist society, laws would be made on the basis of self-ownership. A lot of people have this misconception about anarchy. I've actually talked to my conservative friends who aren't the biggest fans of my beliefs, and they're like, oh, you want anarchy? You want, like, you know, Chaz or, you know, these anarcho-communists? Like, no. Uh, far from it, actually. There would be laws, obviously. Uh, you would replace all the government duties, such as police, firefighters, courts, etc., with private individuals um, that fulfill those tasks for monetary value. Um, An anarchy simply means a lack of government or an absence of government. I know some libertarian socialists or ANCOMs might disagree with me there. Um, on the semantics of anarcho-capitalism, or anarchy in general. Man, I'm wasting a lot of bullets. So, hi, Ma. I apologize, I lost my train of thought, but essentially, obviously, laws would be made on the basis of self-ownership. There would be laws, and it's natural law theory by, um, that was first created, or the idea was thought up of by John, philosopher John Locke. 
and those would be how laws would function in an anarcho-capitalist society. Um, now, as for things like, and I want to touch on this because it's actually a belief that you might not expect me to be, have for this radical idea of capitalism or anarcho-capitalism, and that's that I don't believe in private prisons. I believe in a restitution-based justice system, which is, there would be no death penalty, but essentially it's two eyes for an eye. So let's say you rob someone of $500. Well, you have to pay them back $1,000. $500 because that's how much you stole, and another 500 for stealing it in the first place. And that's kind of how laws would be made. And obviously, if you don't have the money to, uh, you can work it's essentially similar to indentured servitude if you commit a crime against someone and that would also obviously disincentivize murder because um, and I don't have all the answers to this I don't know exactly how you would put a monetary um, price on a human life but essentially anyone who kills someone it would take them a long time to pay the restitution for that now Another thing that I know a lot of people don't like is, you know, obviously, the, you know, monopolies. You know, what if the, you know, what if these private companies just buy out all the other companies and, you know, have their own mo monopoly? So, first, like, regarding monopolies, monopolies have always, since, like, the term was invented, been understood as created by the government. So, for example, I believe it was King Edward, it could have been another king, that gave John Smith, I believe, um, a monopoly on play, creating playing cards. So essentially anybody else in England who tried to make playing cards would be executed because John Smith had made a deal with the Crown and he had a monopoly on making playing cards. So that's always how monopoly has been understood when a government and a business collude to essentially screw other people out of the market. But within the last century, it seemed to gone towards the route of, well, you know, a private business can be a monopoly without the help of the government. So there's been a bit of a semantical shift, as I said, within the last century. Um, and the thing is, really monopolies probably wouldn't be a problem, and here's why. So let's say, let's say just for the sake of argument, obviously there would be a lot more competition in the market because there wouldn't be these... Uh, job crushing and small business crushing regulations um, there'd be a lot more competition but granted let's say there is a monopoly there's a monopoly it holds the entire market share of a particular um, uh, what's the word for it a market I guess you could say so like maybe McDonald's owns all fast food restaurants or just all restaurants in general well that might be a problem you know because it's a monopoly well, it wouldn't be able to sustain that monopoly for very long, and here's why. First of all, a monopoly, so if it's purely pri free market, if someone, they would have to buy out all, all their competition. But if someone simply doesn't want to buy out, well then, okay, they can't make them buy out. They can give them really good offers, and I'm, I'm actually assuming that they probably will give them really good offers, but they can't force someone to be bought out. That's impossible. But let's say everybody does want to be bought out, and that actually, I think, makes the case stronger. So, maybe some businesses enter enter into the market and McDonald's sees them and buys them out, you know, relatively quickly before they can, you know, become big enough competition because, you know, there's only McDonald's in this other business. People are going to this other business. You want to make sure that McDonald's stays on top forever, so you buy out these businesses. Well, more and more people would see, hey, Look at this, McDonald's is buying out small businesses like almost as soon as they enter the market. Wouldn't it be clever to just, you know, create a small business for the sake of being bought out? And I think that's what a lot of people would do. A lot of private firms or businesses would start up with the sole intention of getting bought out. So they see that McDonald's is buying a lot of out a lot of places, just create a business, spend maybe a few thousand dollars uh, creating it. Uh, say McDonald's is paying you twenty twenty thousand dollars to be bought out. All right, you've just made money, and McDonald's would have to continue doing that. And if they don't, then 
it's not a monopoly anymore. Market goes back into the system. But if they do keep buying out every single business that comes into the marketplace, well, then that becomes more difficult because there's more and more p people. And people are realizing that as soon as they enter the market, that McDonald's will try to buy them out. So they're intentionally going into the market with the sole intention of making a profit by being bought out by this larger corporation. So, as I said, either A, they will have to, you know, stop buying people out, uh, because then, and if that happens, then it wouldn't be a monopoly anymore. Or, there is another option, and that is that they continue to buy people out, and they continue, and they continue, and they continue. And then eventually, uh, it would get to the point where McDonald's goes bankrupt because they're spending all their money not just you know on food supplies management employees etc they're also spending a lot of money trying to buy out these smaller businesses just so that they can't compete and you know these businesses keep coming into the market and eventually the government can't do it or sorry McDonald's can't do it anymore so therefore they go bankrupt and then the market goes back to its natural state so as I said, either they just stop buying them out because they realize they can't do it, and then it's not a monopoly, or they keep trying to, they go bankrupt, bankrupt, and that's the end of the story. Monopoly doesn't exist. So I think the free market has a great way of handling monopolies and the problems that come with them. And like I said, when I started talking about monopolies, people have almost always understood since it, the idea was created that a monopoly was not you know something generated by the free market but something generated by the government as a gift to uh, an individual in the market you know not the other way around you have people like Henry Ford who brought about the eight eight hour work week um, you see the market always does things along the that nature to make life's better. Um, so, some other problems is, what about regulations? You know, you need to regulate the market, because even, let's say, you know, even if you were going to grant me, which I doubt many people would grant me, sure, monopolies can exist, but, you know, well, you know, they can pollute the ocean. Alright, well, I'm not exactly sure how the ocean might work, but let's say the river, a river. Now, if they don't own this river, it would have to be owned by someone else. Probably another company, most likely, or another individual. And if that is the case, then that person or company could sue them for dumping um, pollutants or dangerous chemicals or substances onto their private property. So, essentially, if everybody owns some sort of property, as opposed to it being owned by the government or it being owned by basically no one, then you pollute and you get sued. I think that's the most obvious thing. So, you know, that's like dealing with pollutants, uh, you know, pollution and things along those lines and the problems that come with it. Alright, I finally got past that part. Now, I guess what I should, I've kind of talked about the economic stuff, which I'm not super familiar with. My friend Zach knows a hundred times more than I could ever know on the economics of the whole thing. Um, so I guess I should go, I think it, it would be a good idea to kind of go into my individual beliefs on specific policies or ideas that are generally seen maybe right, maybe left. As I said, I don't believe in any specific, like, I, don't, I may have said this, maybe I didn't. Uh, I don't believe in the whole left-right political dichotomy. I believe you believe what you believe. Sorry if that's a bit of a tongue twister. And that you can't just trap someone into this left-right dichotomy where either you're ref left or either you're right. You can't be in the middle. You can't be, you know, outside of that, which I think is just kind of ridiculous to just drown someone's belief systems into either blue or red, left or right, you know, whatever you want to say, good and bad, although depending on who it is, one's going to be good, one's going to be bad, um, so as I said, I don't believe that, so I guess guns, guns is a thing that I would be very right wing on, because I don't think that there should be any, um, 
I guess, gun regulations, obviously, which I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with a lot of people, which, you know, I understand. But essentially, so, obviously, you know, I would be pro-gun. I would be against any gun regulations, um, obviously. Now, in terms, sorry, my mind is kind of focused on two things. So, yeah, I would be kind of pro-gun. Now, uh, let's see, taxes. Like I said, I think both parties obviously support taxes, although it seems that libertarians definitely, and uh, a good amount of conservatives are for lower taxes in general. So I guess you could say I'm right-wing, very right-wing economically. Um, I don't believe in Trump's border wall. I don't think that's a good idea because I don't believe in the concept of states or governments or nations. And I know this is all a lot like to, you know, like these beliefs may seem a bit weird at first. And, you know, they are kind of weird. Uh, I thought it was kind of crazy when, you know, I had first come upon them. It's like, what? No borders? Because, you know, I was always opposed to left. no borders. I, I always saw that as a very, like, kind of far left, kind of communist uh, belief on having no borders. Alright. Um, so yeah, I'm against Trump supporters wall. I guess you could say I'm left wing on drugs. I want full legalization um, and decriminalization of all drugs of any kind whatsoever because I don't believe putting a substance into your own body should get you thrown into a, a cage like an animal. And that's essentially how it is with taxation. Like, I'm sorry for going back to that, but I think that's a pretty big thing that, you know, it's the unpermitted extraction of wealth that one does not own, and if you don't pay up, then we're going to throw you in a cage like you're a wild animal. I don't think that's good. I don't think that's moral. I don't think that's reasonable, I don't think that's logical, I don't think that's intelligent, and I actually find it rather, rather disgusting, actually, the fact that someone can, you know, be thrown in a cage because they decide not to give money to someone that they don't owe money to, that they earned themselves. So essentially, you can understand my beliefs uh, on taxes because it is the unpermitted extraction of wealth that one does not own and you get thrown in a cage like an animal if you don't pay up. Now, abortion. Uh, this is this is a doozy. Now, everyone owns themselves. I think I've made that abundantly clear. But, and there's a big but here. Because the mother owns herself, and if she doesn't want the fetus within her, then she can remove it from her body. And it is unfortunate if that results in death. I am i don't like abortion. I wish it wasn't done. I wish people wouldn't do it. I wish there was a much better alternative. But I'm not for criminalizing it or, you know, making it illegal for the simple fact that the mother does own herself, and I do believe that to be 100% true. Um, and as I said, you know, if the mother owns herself, then she can evict the fetus from her body. But I have heard that, you know, as technology advances, we may be able to take the fetus out of the mother's body during the first trimester as early. I think right now you can do it in the third trimester, obviously. Um, without killing it, and I think that would be a good middle ground between the pro-life and pro-choice crowd, because, obviously, I'm not really trying to appease any, I guess you could say I'm pro-choice, but, essentially, um, pro-life crowd, despite the, what the pro-choice crowd says of them wanting to control women, the pro-life crowd just wants the fetus to live, and the pro-choice crowd, despite what the pro-life crowd says they want to kill babies, the pro-choice crowd just wants the women uh, to not have to deal with, you know, taking care of an entirely new human being simply because, you know, they had sex. So, I think that there's kind of a middle ground, and, you know, you can take the, 
child out of the woman's body very early on and it'll still be alive but the mother won't necessarily have to take care of it um, and I do believe you know an adoption uh, and uh, I do believe you can sell I do believe all right I, I love how I say I do believe I do believe I do believe you can sell and this may sound bad you can sell the guardianship of a child you can't sell a child like a possession because the child owns themselves too um, but essentially because uh, the parent is the guardian if it doesn't want to be a guardian guardian this kind of how an adoption uh, how adoption would work in an ANCAP society and they can you know essentially say all right I'll pay you or you'll pay me this much I'm not whatever they decide to do you'll take care of this child so you can um, you know sell the guardianship not the child and like if a child runs away from home it will not be obligated you know by the police to come and find the child and bring it home I mean you know, obviously the parents could pay them to do that and try to convince them to but the child would not be forced to have to you know come back to that place as far as private property goes um, the owner of the private property would have a monopoly force on that monopoly uh, so essentially if you know I own something and you want to use it I can allow you to use it but I still have not monopoly of force on it so I can take it at any time now minimum wage minimum wage this is another good good political uh, you know argument should we raise it to fifteen dollars should we you know keep it the same what should the minimum wage be I don't believe in a minimum wage I believe that the wage of an employee or worker should be determined between said employee and worker um, in a mutually uh, in a mutually voluntary agreement where they decide alright I'll work for you and you pay me this much money uh, you know if there's agreement there fine but if you know the employer can't force someone to work for someone and you know the employee can't force you know the employer to hire them which you know that's the same way it is right now so that's obviously only logical like you have to hire them or you uh, can't sorry my mind's in two different places as I said <coughs> uh. So yeah, no minimum wage, and I do think the minimum wage actually hurts the you know people that tries to help. So say for example, I come out of high school, I don't have enough money to go to college, uh, but I want some experience in the market. So there's this guy, right? He'll hire me for five bucks an hour. You know, I don't have any experience. I don't have you know, I'm not don't have a special set of skills yet. I haven't really honed my craft. Um, I haven't really done much to show that my labor has very much value so we agree all right he says I'll pay you five dollars because I don't think your work is super valuable to me but I can pay you five dollars an hour do you agree to that and I can say sure I'll, I'll work for five dollars an hour I don't have that much um, experience or skills in the market yet so I think this is, would be a good starting point to you know jump forward in life and you know keep going in the marketplace and that's a great thing but because of these minimum wage laws so say that you know you can all you have to hire someone for 725 an hour that's I think the national average I believe it's like 825 in Florida which is the state I live in specifically um, and those laws so you know you have to pay them a minimum of seven dollars 25 cents so if this person wants to hire me for five dollars because I don't have that much experience I'm willing to work for five dollars because I don't have that much experience and I think it would be a good introduction to the market well we can't do that because it would be illegal literally against the law so I don't believe in uh, the minimum wage because I believe it can hurt the people the very people that's trying to help, trying to protect, try to, you know, safeguard. So those are my thoughts on the minimum wage. I'm gonna pause the video clip, see how far into this we are.
Alright, so we're about 40 minutes into this. Um, I'll choke this guy out. I actually saw a thing on YouTube on how, a while ago, like how to get through these guys easily, and it's actually the method that I'm using, like, go through each one of these guys, uh, choke that guy out, then choke this next guy out. And I did it one time, and it worked pretty well, but it, as you've seen, my most recent attempts uh, aren't very aren't very good at, you know, defeating these guys. I'm hoping he doesn't see me, mainly. Come on. Come on, man. Alright, is anyone coming here? Oh, crap. They definitely know I'm here, but I guess that's kind of my fault. Uh, what's another political subject? Obviously, I have a, a abortion was something that I didn't want to change my mind on for the longest time. Um, it's something that you know I thought, you know, how can I be pro-choice? I've always been pro-life. I've spent so many years being pro-life, being anti-abortion. Uh, you know, all this stuff. I didn't. I honestly, it's kind of an emotional emotional thing. But I didn't want to be pro-choice. I didn't really want to change my mind on this thing. I think a lot of people are like that. We don't necessarily want to change our mind you know we'll say you know we're open we'll try to be open-minded but a lot of times you know even if our ideas are wrong we're not very prone to changing them at least immediately like i was i obviously did change them over time uh but not like immediately i heard about anarcho-capitalism it's like all right i'll abandon all prior political beliefs that i held uh because i'm don't believe in a state i don't support the united states military um, which is another very unpopular opinion and something that i didn't want to do for a long time i've been very patriotic almost my entire life even before i got into you know talking about or reading about listening about listening to sorry political stuff i've always you know kind of liked my country but because i don't believe in a state or government that should exist you can't really reconcile that with the existence of the world, possibly the largest state or government that the world has, has ever seen, at least in terms of power. Uh, there's obviously, even right now, uh, Russia and Canada that are bigger geographically than the United States. Is that, so that's something I didn't like. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of some other positions. Obviously, I'm against the lockdown. Uh, the government mandated lockdowns at least uh, because I don't think that the government should be able to force someone to you know stay in their house and not come out obviously it varies state to state but I mean no matter what I'm against any type of lockdown of any kind so I guess that kind of covers that because I am anti-lockdown you could say shot. Immigration, obviously. I've explained my anti-Trump wall beliefs, so I believe in complete, uh, you know, I'm totally fine with immigration from nation to nation. I guess, obviously, there wouldn't be any nations. Um, so, you know, I'm cool with that. And essentially, I'm more passionate when I debate this stuff, and a lot of people, you know, are like, how can you not be for free healthcare, free college? These are obviously more people on the left. And so I would say kind of to these people, if you want to create your own community, your own areas where, you know, you do offer people, you know, healthcare for free, um, and you do have, like, voluntary taxes where everybody who lives in this certain area is like, all right, you know, we'll all, you know, put a money into the, you know, the bucket to help each other out, you know, some kind of communal living, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with, you know, having uh, free, quote-unquote, free healthcare. There's really no free healthcare because it is, go as I said, it would be government-funded, so, you know, if you want to fund it, you know, yourself, help other people, I'm 100% in favor of that. 
All I ask is that you don't force peaceful private individuals, I guess such as myself, to pay for your free healthcare system. And then try to, you know, act virtuous as if, you know, it's such a great thing. You know, really any of my political beliefs, even like, you know, these left-wing ones, you know, being me being against free healthcare, free college, free anything. It's like, if you want to, you know, create some kind of community where you and some other people live together and give these things out for free, I'm in favor of that. You just don't force everybody else to do it with a gun to their head and saying that, hey, if you don't do it, you're lock we'll lock you in a cage. Perhaps that explains my basic contentions against anything government-funded, because I am against taxation, obviously. I think I've gone through that too many times to count, at this point at least. So, yeah, I, I think that does a good job illustrating my, some of my anarcho-capitalist beliefs.